What's up everybody, we're back again with some more reactions to some comedians guys. Today we have Jimmy Carr talking about Tay and men's mental health crisis. So obviously that's a huge thing nowadays guys. I talk about it a lot on my Instagram, on my YouTube, how I think a lot of these issues are just BS guys. I've actually talked to a clinical psychologist the last year with a masters and she said that a lot of these issues are BS guys. They just over prescribe pills and she's a flipping actual psychologist. So yeah, very, very impressive to hear. And this was a lady in Ireland. So I love to hear it guys. Let me know your thoughts. If your life sucks guys, if you wake up in the morning, you're super overweight, you have no job, you hate your life, of course you're gonna be depressed. That's plain and simple guys. Everyone has been there, every man, me, myself, every man has been there guys. It's just how you work through these problems guys. Like, comment, subscribe, let's get it. Um, you know, depression is essentially thinking about yourself too much. Mm. You Last time we spoke on the mm. podcast, you talked about, I would say, yeah, sorry, that, that feels to me maybe a little bit too harsh. Yeah. Because I think people suffer with depression and that's a, it's a disease and it's incredibly serious and we think of suicide as being something that stands alone. Guys, what the hell happened to Jimmy Carr? He looks like gaunt and his head looks like he got a full facelift or something. He looks completely different to what I remember him. It looks like he dyes his hair as well. He looks completely different, guys. It's, he looks like a clone. Jimmy Carr doesn't look like Jimmy Carr. No, it's a symptom of a disease called depression, right? So it's the, it's the permanent solution to a temporary problem. You don't want to feel this way anymore. Yeah. But actually, you don't want to feel nothing anymore. Uh, you like to feel better. So it's that thing of like, I don't think we talk about it enough, but I think that thing of, you know, thinking about yourself all the time, I think you, it just leads to a, can lead to a, a melancholy, a sadness. I think depression Dude, is- Dude, he looks like a ventriloquist puppet. That's what he looks like, guys. Oh my God. It, it, it's like his weight loss, but he looks completely different. He, he had plastic surgery, a lot of plastic surgery. Maybe a slightly separate thing. Not mm -hmm. to- Nick, no, no, yeah, but it, yeah, feels no. Like, it's it feels like that's to... a disease. Yeah. And there's also a lot of sadness in the world. Mm. And you're lucky if you're sad. Because if you're, if you're sad, it's circumstantial. Yeah. And you can do something about it. Yeah. You know, are, are you depressed because you have a serotonin imbalance in your head and it's a heritable trait? Or are you sad because your life hasn't worked out the way you want it to work yeah, out? It's, it's, guys, it's 100% of the time. Let's be real. Let's talk about depression or anxiety. If your life just sucks as a guy, you're not getting laid, you're basically a virgin again. You know, oh, I had a lot of, I got a lot of women back when I was 20 years old, but then when you hit like 25, 30, you're just not getting any women. That's because you haven't taken care of your body, you know, you're not working hard, you're not working in your business, you're not working in a job, like, you're not doing these things that actually will benefit you later on in life. You're living at home, sleeping on the damn couch, like, these things matter in life, guys. Most men will be upset about that stuff, all right? It's just how it is, man. Well, if that's the case, the latter, you're in luck because you can change that. Yeah. It does feel like there's a bit of a crisis going on within young men at the moment. And I think your new show on Netflix shines a light on many of the difficulties that young men are facing. I, I was really excited to talk to you about this particular topic because I've been trying to arrive at a position myself on why so many young men appear to be lost and suicidality has increased. And there's, you know, these new masculine influences or masculine influencers that are really rounding up this cohort of young men. Yeah. Who, who are we talking about? Uh, Andrew the An Tate? Andrew Tate's of the world. Well, Andrew and Tate's interesting, isn't he? Because um, who, who made the, I think John Mulaney made the observation, Trump is a poor person's idea of what a rich person looks like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got gold taps. And I think sort of Andrew Tate is like a 14 year old boy's idea of what masculinity might look like. Yeah, right, that's a good, that's a good take. I like that take. Like it's really, it, it's, and, and, and of course, nature abhors a vacuum. And there's a real vacuum for um, elders. Like we now, we don't learn how to shave from our fathers. It's a YouTube video. Yeah. And so you lose something in that, in that bonding. True. So and there's a big bit in the new show where I give a young guy, an audience member, a pretty tough time. Like we have the talk and I give them advice on how to uh, be with a woman. And it's, I'm not wrong about anything. It's really funny and it's really rude but I'm not wrong about stuff. It's like, it's about consent and it's, it's, I think it's really, it's really good because it's, I've sugared the pill of the message because people don't want to talk about it. People go, it's obvious what consent is. Yeah, not to 17 year old boys or girls. It's like, actually what, what does that look like and how should that be? So it's, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a really fun routine. It's a really fun routine to perform and to write. What is it to be a man these days? Because it's quite confusing in terms, even the, the conversation around like chivalry and understanding, you know. Well, people talk about toxic masculinity and easy fix. Be a gentleman, be a mensch. That's it. This is done. Be a gentleman, be a mensch. 
Uh, you know, a, a gentleman is never rude by accident. It's Christopher Hitchens' line. Great. I, I, I don't know. I mean, mm. my thing about young men today, if I was going to give young men advice, it would be get the right drugs and the real thing, right? In real life. Live in real life, yeah, right? Like, like, like video games are fine and stuff to, to relax and have your downtime, but if you're not where you want to be in life, guys, you have to work hard to get out of that situation. I mean, just plain and simple, guys. If you don't like what you're doing, and it doesn't have to be you get loads of money because a lot of people get this idea of oh, I'm loads of money. Money helps, you have to get that, but you have to kind of like and enjoy what you do to kind of get to that next stage of, of getting the wealth. You know, if you just hate what you do every day, you're probably not going to be successful at it, guys. You know, probably not, man. So why young men are obsessed by video games, right? Mm. Obsessed. They're spending hours and hours and hours online playing video games. Why? Well, that's a proxy for career. Yeah. Right, video games. You think about the levels of video games and what people do on video games. It's, that's a proxy. That's like a, uh, it's a, it's a substitute for the career that they're not having. Yeah. And then they spend a lot of time uh, you know, fapping to to Pornhub or you porn or whatever. True. Uh, and that's a proxy for sex. Mm. And my thing would be, George Orwell wasn't right. Our power won't be taken away from us by some authoritarian master. We're going to give it away for cheap dopamine. Yeah. And the cheap. That's a good one, guys. I like that. Dopamine of video games and online porn and living online. Well, and drugs as well. People do drugs like at their all time high now. Like everybody flipping does drugs now. So, you know. Is 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 getting in the way of real life. Mm. So it's risk, right? That's that's what we're not allowing young people to do because we're we're saying to young people, you can't take risks in real life. We're we're helicopter parenting. Yes. We're not giving them the freedom. How much freedom? Yeah, guys. Here's the thing. And I'm not very, I'm a pretty risk averse of guy when it comes to driving and things like that. But when it comes to money and, and financial freedom and this sort of thing and doing like other business ideas, I am the riskiest guy in the world. Guys, I, I'm almost scare myself sometimes. I'm like, damn, should I even be doing that? Like, I just, I don't even care. I just go full steam ahead into like the biggest riskiest business I can think of. All right, when it comes to money, when it comes to like stuff like, I don't even know guys, like flipping, you know, driving fast and stuff. Don't do that, obviously, right? Should you give a kid as much as they can cope with? Yeah. Right? 14-year-olds used to be babysitters. They now need babysitters. That's not good, right? Yeah. So you should allow them more freedom in, in the real world because otherwise, the only place they get freedom is online. Yeah. And mm. like the, the video games and stuff are fine to relax, like I said, but if you're living your life through the video game, that's not good, guys. That's, it's crazy. Like. No freedom in the real world. You're not allowed to go to the park and hang out, yeah. but you're allowed to do whatever you want online. Well, that's a, that feels like a very bad social experiment. Yeah. That feels like a bad idea. Yeah. Yeah, it feels like we've inverted, um, Ma you know, Maslow, this pyra pyramid, the hierarchy of needs, and you go, well, food and shelter and warmth and to do all the... We've got all the bottom stuff worked out in our society, right? Yeah. We, we kind of can't see it. We're not grateful for that because we can't see... The hot shower. The hot shower. We can't see the third world and we can't see the people in the past having a tougher time than us. So we take it for granted. But yeah, yeah, like everyone just takes everything for granted. Like, especially in Ireland, guys, I feel like people are like so not like happy with what they're doing like like okay yeah you're not going to get rich if you work like i said in the last video in a factory or like as a dustbin man you have to sell something you have to do a business if you want to get a lot of money like live like working as a dustbin driver like you used to be able to have like a good life or working in a factory you used to have a good life with your family and okay sweetie see you later the, the, you know your, your you know your, your childhood sweetheart would be at home with the kids and all oh, good times you can't do that anymore that's been taken away from us guys House of 300,000 euro. You cannot do that. Both people have to be working very, very hard all day, all day long. Like, and if you don't want to do that, then you have to start a business. Like, there's only two options, guys. I don't know why people are so like stupid and don't understand that now. It's just crazy. But at the same time, you have to be like kind of grateful that you're able to get a job at all, you know? Down that stuff. They hadn't worked that stuff out 200 years ago. Yeah. But they had the top of the pyramid sorted. Everyone knew who they were, they had their identity, yeah. and they knew what their purpose was. Everyone knew yeah. who they were, what they were about, True. and they were connected True. To, to the others in the, in the group. True. And now we're kind of free-floating individuals. We kind of worship the individual as if, as if we can survive as individuals. Mm. I always think of that thing of like, there's no such thing as a baby. There's a baby and a mother, there's a baby and a father, baby and an auntie, but there's no such thing as a baby because a baby on its own isn't anything. Oh, yeah. 
it's dead. True. You, it needs taken care of. True. We're all still babies. Mm. We all need the connections. You, you, yourself, yeah, sure, there's, there's a lot of yourself that's, that's within you, mm. but a lot of it is out in the world. It's mm. connected to other people and it kind of it mediates who you think you are. And that's, you know, that's, that's slightly missing from society where you kind of live online and you're kind of a self-authored thing. You're just on, on the computer, on the screen, yeah. and you're not connected and you're not taking risks. Taking risks is really important. It's the most important thing, guys. Is taking risks is probably going to be the only thing in life that you do that's going to be the most important thing. Not with your life. Like, don't go bungee jumping and skydiving. You know, that's stupid. But financially and starting businesses and thinking of different ideas and, oh, maybe we could do this, maybe we could sell this. And if it fails, that's good. Because then you know you're trying, guys. Yeah, if you're not even trying, if you're not failing in your life, like, if you don't wake up in the morning and be like, oh, man, this video might fail or this day might fail, this this uh, gym session might fail, then you're, you're fail then you're failing at life, guys. Most of what I've learned in the gym, guys, I train to failure most days, okay? What does that mean, guys? I train to what I can't push the weight anymore. That's how you get more muscle. It's the same way how you get more money, guys. Exact same way. Is this in part due to the rise in atheism and agnosticism? I think we, we both, me and you, lost our sort of religious faith around the same age. Mm. I think sort of early... Mid-20s. Mid, mid I think it's a weird thing where you go, you can lose your... I, I certainly don't believe in the stories. There's two types of fools, right? There's people that take religion literally, and there's people that think it has no value. Okay? Both, both idiots for different reasons. Like, it works as a thing, religion. I, quite, I miss it because the reason the ceremony works isn't because God's pleased. It's because the people came together. Right. And so I think we look for things that, that are um, proxies for religion. Yeah. And sometimes that's football. Could, football. It could be environmentalism. You know, because you go, well, I, I, I need something, I need purpose in my life, I need to feel... It's like veganism, that's why people come together. feel like I'm, I'm adding value, and what a great cause, I'm going to save the planet. Yeah. It's a big thing to think about, it's got a religiosity to it. True. But I don't think that's the, you know, I don't think that's necessarily the answer. You know, some people do it with politics, they think politics is going gonna, is gonna to be heaven, they're going to they're gonna come up with some perfect system. Yeah. I think you're putting too much pressure on politics. True. First time I've ever said this, actually, but when you just said, I, I think I miss religion, I think I miss religion. It's nice, wasn't it? It's, it was, a, it's was, a lovely thought as well when you lose someone that you love very much. It's a lovely thought. I mean, heaven is just, it's a lovely thought. And I think in a way, in our culture, fame and fortune has replaced heaven. That is for damn sure, guys. No one even cares about heaven anymore. Heaven on earth is what people want. They want heaven on earth be able to get with every single woman that they want to get, have all the money in the world. I mean, this is just so true, guys. It's just unbelievable, man. And if you guys want to do stuff like that, you have to build yourself, build your body, build your career, build your build your sales, you know, build people around you, make yourself perfect and then give it to the people. That's what you should be doing. But this whole thing of not having heaven is not good, guys. You know, ha have a religion. You know, religion is, is fine. You know, I know everyone nowadays doesn't like religion. Certain religions are good. Definitely, and I, I really like them. You know, I was born in different countries, and, and I understand that there's different religions. I love that, but having something to keeps you morally good is good as well, guys. You know, religion is not a bad thing. You know, people shouldn't be saying that's crazy. It's the land of milk and honey, and where you can feel like your um, uh, everything's okay. Yeah, everything's taken care of. So true. Um, and it is good. But it's it's not it's not heaven. I don't believe in an afterlife. I believe you know it's funny because I guess you can become famous for different things as well. And I like that guys. He said he looked straight at the camera and he said it is good. And I'll chew, I'll tell you what guys. I've been out of shape and I've been in shape. And being in shape is way better than being out of shape. I've had money, you know, at some periods where I've had more money. I've days of wealth and I've had days of not so being so wealthy. Let's say and the days of wealth are so much better than the days of not being wealthy. Leave in a next life so I don't think anything happens after you die but I think you can have a next life you have a very different life mm -hmm. so it's interesting you're at this point of your, your life when you're thinking about well I might, we might start a family it's a whole other life yeah. it's a whole other you'll hardly recognise yourself yeah. you and your partner will be saying what did we do what did we do all day yeah it's funny guys because even before YouTube I was like man what do people do? I have the gym and purpose, but before before doing like business and things, I was like, what the hell? 
what the hell do I do all day? Like, what do people actually do all day? It just seems ridiculous. Uh, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. I have probably lived like three lifetimes in my twenties, and my twenties isn't even over yet. I have still have two. Th- I still have two more years in my twenties. You know, I feel like I've lived three different lifetimes in my in my twenties. It's absolutely inc- it's insane, guys. Now we're not a Peppa Pig world or wherever you find yourselves. This really just struck me that I do kind of miss religion, but it feels like when I lost my religion, I put a backpack on, a backpack full of weights on, and I think that's what the responsibility and individualism is. I mean, for me, the the loss of religion was a rush of blood to the head. It was like, oh, I, I this is my life, and I need to make good on this, and I need to live it. The tragedy is most people don't have that kind of, mm. they don't get to kind of follow their 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 dream. Yeah, and guys, you know, I heard a really nice quote the last day. Your job doesn't pay you 30,000 to work for them. Your job pays you 30,000 to give up on your dreams. Guys, don't give up on your dreams. I love you all, guys. Stay free, and I'll see you all in the next one, bro. Peace.